It's a dynamic almost as old as time, the atomic ballet between the electron and the nucleus. Being able to mathematically predict these movements allows us to conceive of new materials and test them before manufacturing, allows us to visualize the structure of viruses and find drugs to combat them, and opens the door to a better understanding of nature itself. Thanks to Roberto Carr and Michele Paranello, we have the math that makes chemistry itself computable. Well, uh, obviously the coffee is better, <laughs> but the coffee, that was, I would say, dramatic. <laughs> Today, Michele Paranello of ETH Zurich and the University of Lugano and Roberto Carr of Princeton are an ocean apart. And raised in Sicily and Milan, respectively, the two grew up on opposite ends of post-war Italy. Our house was full of books that I loved to read, there was uh, music. These times were quite different from today. Science was very popular and people thought that science could solve all the problems in the world. Carr and Paranello both pursued careers in physics, each keenly interested in the way atoms and electrons move and interact with one another. After all, this was fundamental to many emerging technologies of the time, and still is today. But when the two met in 1972, the field was plagued by a century-old problem. To simulate a chemical reaction, it's important to know how atoms will combine, break apart, and recombine. Because the orbits of electrons actually hold atoms together, understanding how electrons move is crucial. In the 19th century, physicist Erwin Schrödinger created an equation that could predict how an electron would orbit a nucleus. Schrödinger's equation worked well when dealing with one or two atoms at a time, but for trillions of atoms, Schrödinger's equation becomes too complex to solve even if all the computers in the world today were put to the task. For years, chemists used a mathematical workaround to estimate how atoms moved in their experiments. The problem was the workaround discarded electrons altogether, replacing them with imaginary, unbreakable springs as the force binding atoms, which isn't how things really work. Not even close, actually. In fact, without moving electrons, not only would there be no chemistry simulations, there'd be no computers to run them, because there'd be no factories that make computers because there'd be no one to build computer factories, because there'd be no Earth, and well, no anything, whatsoever, anywhere, for eternity. That's seriously how important it is that electrons aren't ignored. Bottom line, if the springs between the nuclei cannot break, chemistry can't exist at all, let alone be predicted accurately. But scientists used this unrealistic math because nobody thought a better solution was possible. Carr and Paranello met on the precipice of a new era for physics. Until then, most complex calculation was done with pencil and paper. But in the 70s and 80s, computers were becoming more capable than ever. They were still as big as a few refrigerators and slower than your phone. But when Carr and Paranello began thinking about the atomic problem, they did so with these great new machines in mind. It took months of collaborating and lots of coffee. But in 1985, the pair solved the problem with an ingenious set of equations that brought electrons back into simulations. The carr paranello method, as it's known, revolutionized computational chemistry with software packages that produce realistic atom-electron simulations, which can even run on a laptop. One of the many programs derived from their work is available to the public for free. It's called Quantum Espresso, named as such by its creators at a meeting with Carr because, well, we were all uh, drinking espresso. Since the mid-1980s, the carr paranello method has pushed the boundaries of computational chemistry. All the world around us is made of atoms and electrons, so it has been applied to many, many problems. Carr and Paranello have given us new ways to design pharmaceutical drugs. Their method gives microbiologists invaluable insight into the structure of viruses like HIV. Major industries like automobile manufacturing extensively use the method in materials research and development. And the physics community has dreamt up applications as diverse as simulating the chemistry of another planet's atmosphere to tackling the biggest questions of them all.